is up YouTube um, for today's episode of Why, new series that we're going to play around with. Um, today we're going to be talking about why is the Supra a car. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, the Supra is obviously a good car by car terms and um, like it has a 3 point some odd second 0 60 and it makes 300 and well I guess dyno tests show that it actually makes more than 300 and the 30 horsepower is supposed to have um, and it's it's got some decent numbers it's got an inline 6 made by BMW um, but it's got things that make it on paper a cool car and it is it is a pretty cool vehicle but the only thing that really hurts the Supra sorry two things that in my opinion hurt the Supra the most more than anything about it on the market versus I mean like I won't talk about that like it, is it cool that Toyota brought back the Supra should they have who knows I think it's pretty neat that they decided to go through with it some people say should just let it be what it was I get it oh well um, that's not an issue for me uh, bringing back old names and whatever that's fine um, my two main issues are one which isn't as bad as the other so I'll start off with it the BMW partnership making cars and making two-door vehicles, especially in today's market of SUV, SUV, SUV. Uh, look at Ford, look at Chevrolet, look at Dodge and Ram and all of them and Chrysler. Everyone is pumping out more SUVs, getting rid of sedans, things like that. Uh, I mean, BMW, Mercedes, Audi. Uh, Mer uh, BMW is like at their X7 or X8 or something like that. BMW, or sorry. Audi has quite a few, BMW has quite a few, Mercedes has quite a few. Sorry, I went back on myself a lot right there. Um, everyone's got SUVs because SUVs are what people want, so it makes sense. I'm not mad at the market for wanting SUVs because what people want, they're going to keep making them, can't get away from it. So, making a two-door, two-seater sports car is a bit of a gamble, especially when it's not an exotic. It's not at the top end. Uh people in the lower end markets aren't wanting two doors, two seaters. Uh, kids nowadays, especially, uh, they want to get a vehicle to have all their friends and families want room for things like that. It makes sense. So partnering with BMW to help with funds, help make the car and things like that makes sense since a two door is a gamble. Totally get it. It is just a shame. Toyota also partnered with the 86 slash Scion FRS slash uh, Subaru BRZ. That one, eh, I mean, it's not that much Toyota. I mean, if you, I mean, the heart of it is the Subaru Boxer engine and things like that. It's a big heart of a vehicle and things like that. Um, but the BRZ FRS. 86 never really took off. I'm honestly surprised it's still around. The BRZ is one of my favorite cars of all time, but do you really see them that often? They only have 205 horsepower. I mean, it eh, it doesn't have a lot going for it, but I still like it. The Supra is BMW motor, BMW transmission, BMW, 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 Toyota did say that things with the, with the engine and things like that, they did their own tuning, which for some reason their tuning made their engine less efficient. The BMW inline 6 variant for the Z4 makes 385 horsepower. Toyota's makes like 330-ish. What, what, what's up with that? That just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's the Supra. I mean, if you look at the GTR from when the Supra was in its last generation, they were on par with each other, and now the GTR is way above and beyond and makes 600 horsepower and twin turbo V6, and it's really cool. Makes sense. It's all wheel drive, it's got all cool things. Godzilla is the best it's ever been. 
sorry R32 fans, but it's only gotten better. Um, so, why, why is there worse? Even though the dyno numbers are better, it's still not 385. Um, it would have been cool for especially the legend that is the Supra, the Toyota Supra, to be a Toyota vehicle. That's all. That's that's my issue with that. Is it's it just it it would have been cool. The real big issue, in my opinion, is it cost a hundred thousand dollars. What is up with that? How how can you how can you charge that much when for a hundred k? Like off the top of my head, not even for a hundred k. You can go straight to Camaro, a ZL1, 650 horsepower, 600 torque. Sure, 650 torque. Sure, it's a it's a muscle car, you know, and it's more straight line performance. Uh, I mean, that that thing costs in the 70s ish. Okay, get a ZL1, one LE. Now you've got the track one, and it comes with a manual. Another thing the Super doesn't come with anymore, but I don't. That one doesn't bother me. Um, comes with the manual, comes with all the aero, looks pretty awesome in person, um, all the carbon fiber and stuff like that, and it does what it was supposed to do very well. It is very good on track. It has great track numbers. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more expensive, come uh, staying with Chevrolet uh, Z06, Corvette Z06, same numbers, great weight and things like that. It is a heavier Corvette, but it's still not the heaviest thing on the planet. Uh, very quick car. Um, I mean, and, and I personally consider the Corvette, especially the C7, into the C8 to be a supercar. I mean, like, why wouldn't it allow, be allowed? Besides the fact that it's, it has a Chevrolet badge on it, doesn't even have a Chevrolet badge on his. The Corvette logo was made by Chevrolet, and for some reason, that isn't allowing it to be a supercar. Um, what else can you get for roughly a hundred thousand? Uh, again, if you're still going, if you still want to beat the track push, you can go. Another American option is GT350R, and then soon the GT500, which can go up to 100,000. I think it can go up to like 102,000 ish. Uh, that thing comes with 760 horsepower, and that dwarfs the Supras. Uh, I don't know. It's just like. There are better options. There's better bang for your buck. And if you want real bang for your buck, I would go Hellcat. I mean, you can find a used one for anywhere from 50 to 60 grand for 700 horsepower, or you can go Red Eye. Probably won't find any used ones of those, but those are in the 80,000 up to 90,000. That's 797 horsepower. Like, what? Of course, that's more straight line performance. Oh well. You're still getting more for what you paid. Uh, things like a couple Audis and stuff like that. Um, more in the used variants and things. I don't know. Uh, again, big competitor. The current GTR, like I mentioned earlier, sits around 100000 Um Why wouldn't you go for one of those? Of course, depends on your dealer. Some dealers are charging more and can charge up to 150000 things like that kind of sucks but oh well uh a used audi r8 especially if you're looking to the v8 option that still came with 400 horsepower uh all the way up to newer ones that come with the v10 and things like that you can find in the in the realm of 100,000 and under you can find the uh v8 ones for in the 60s i only know that because that's my dream car and i've looked at those extensively i know you can find them and if you if you just spend a few minutes on car gurus you can find those and that is a phenomenal, of course, biased, fair car, but that is a phenomenal variant for a two-door sports car. Two-door, two-seater, supercar. It just, I don't understand why you would spend $100,000 on something that has an almost identical variant with more horsepower, just with a different, different little circle badge on it. The, the Supra does have some good things going for it. It does look cool. The interior is nice, but that's only because the BMW's interior is nice. 
the eight speed will be good because it's BMW's eight speed and that's all cool. Um, it just it doesn't make sense. Why is the Supra in production? Why is it in the production that it is right now? Why is this the Supra that has come out? That is the question. Why? Why is this their their final version? Everyone at their board meetings went yes this is what we want to do this will be the supra and people are going to love it of course people are going to like it They're, especially the people that have been waiting for the supra forever are going to appreciate that it's come back and is it going to be a good driver's car and everything yes it'll do great so then sorry about this camera cut out and uh, i didn't realize it till it was over but my final thoughts are of course like i was saying why get the super over everything else just doesn't quite make a lot of sense so obviously we'll see if it ends up being a good car and if people like it if it's worth that price point over the next couple months when it actually releases and things like that uh that'll do it for this video as always like comment subscribe if there's anything you think could be done better any comments or ideas that you have obviously list them down um and i will see you in the next video